What is up people, you all have been asking how I make these bass drum decals and what this thing is. So today, we're going to talk about that. So first up, there's a few things that you'll need. You'll need a computer, a photo editing software, I use Photoshop, but Illustrator's probably a better bet. A vinyl plotter, this one is a silhouette cameo, there's a link in the description if you're interested. Adhesive vinyl rolls in any color that you want. Transfer paper, a bass drum head, and also goof-off graffiti remover. So we'll get to that later. So now let's talk about how to get the logos. So to get these logos, if you're dealing with like modern drum companies, so like here you'll see I have the Pearl logo. You can go onto Google, search it, and most likely you'll find it. And what I'll do is go to Tools, and then go to Size, and do Large, because the bigger the, the image, the better. Um, so this one's 1500 by 1500, that's plenty big. So what I'll do is I'll save this image and then open it in Photoshop. And now from here, I wanna get rid of the background. I want just the text. Before I do anything, I'm actually gonna invert the color so that the, the text is black, makes it a little bit easier to see. So I'll just select this uh, background, delete that, and then select this background, delete that, and anything left on the inside of the letters, I'll delete that. And now I have a nice clean logo. Now, if you're having trouble finding a logo, you'll have to get creative. So like for the Fiber Star, oh, hey, look, my, my Fiber Star video. But I searched high and low for the Fiber Star logo and I like couldn't find anything. The best thing I could find was basically like a photo of a drum with the logo still on the bass drum, but that does us no good. So you have to get a little bit creative sometimes. So for this logo, I started with a modern Tama logo and the old school ones, this T here is a uh, bigger and it's not italicized. So I'll kind of straighten that out and then make it bigger. And now for the text underneath of it, I just found a font that was similar and typed it out. Um, it's not 100% perfect, but it's close enough and you can't really tell. And now down the road, if I want to, you know, make a logo for my superstar, I can just Type out Superstar, and now I have a new logo. And now sometimes you have to get really sneaky with finding logos. So I have an Oriello kit, and on Google I cannot find uh, an image of the logo. Um, all I see are these HHG snares, which is one right there. I see you, Sam. But I can't find a logo, so if I go to their website. Let's see if I can find anything. Oh, and what do you know? There's nothing on their site, but there's a nice little image right here. So if I right click that, open image and new tab, you'll see that it's blank and there's nothing, but that's because it's a white image on a white background. So you can't see it. So if I go right click, save as, now I have a nice high quality image of this logo because this is actually an SVG file, so I can make it any size that I want. It'll be nice and clear. There's no pixels in an SVG file, so it's scalable. Scalable vector graphic, I think is what it stands for. So yeah, this is like the perfect ideal scenario. So sometimes you just have to look in the right places, and most of the time that right place is right in front of you. So yeah. Another thing that stirred up a lot of questions was this Ludwig logo I did in my name. And, you know, my, my name is pretty simple to spell. There's a lot of repeating letters and shapes, if that makes sense. So, how I made this one, I just took the D from the Ludwig logo. The A is the U flipped upside down. The V is half of the W. The I is the I, and of course the D is the D. And then the R's, I just found a font that was similar and then kind of matched the, the slant of the, the logo, and then connected the lines of the R's with the line going underneath, and that's how I made it. It's pretty simple, nothing crazy. I didn't find like a font that was a, a match and then kind of recreate it. I didn't use like a, a Ludwig logo name font generator. It's simple, I just copy and pasted from the existing letters in the logo to make this logo. So I'll be cutting out this Oriolo logo and I'll save it as a PNG and then open it in the plotter software. Before we go any farther, you want to figure out what size you want to make it. So I want to make mine 7 inches, so I'll just rescale it to 7 inches. So now in the plotter software, I'll go to the trace tool, uh, select trace area and just select this and then trace. And now I'll delete the, uh, the image and now I have just the, the outline or the path of the logo and now I can print it out. 
This is the cutting mat that my plotter uses and I keep this piece of paper on it just to protect it. And now I'll take the vinyl and uh, cut out a piece that is a little bit bigger than the size of the logo. So now I'll place it on the cutting mat. So now that this is prepared, we can go over to the plotter. So now I can load the mat in. Now over on the software, I can send this image to the printer. Now I can remove this from the backing piece or the cutting mat and then peel off all the stuff that we don't want. And there you have it, a nice clean base drum decal. So to get this on the head, we now need to use what's called transfer paper. So all we have to do is peel off some of this, place the transfer paper sticky side on the decal. Now this next step is optional, but I want to remove the logo from the bass drum head. I'm too lazy to take the head off of the drum, so I just kind of protected the rim with some tape here. But if you use Goof Off Graffiti Remover, this seems to work the best I found. So I'll squirt it on, let it sit, and then wipe it off. Now, aligning the logo can be a little bit difficult. This one's pretty simple because I kind of want it like that at an angle, and that angle doesn't really matter. But if you have one where the angle does matter, say you want to put this right here, of course you don't want it to be skewed to one side like that. So what I do typically is I'll take a ruler or straight edge, butt it up to the uh, tension rods, and depending on the, the size of the logo, you can either do it like that, or like this, or like that. Just somewhere where it's straight, somewhere that you want it, and then I'll kind of just line it up with, uh, with that. So kind of like that but i don't really need to worry about that so what i'll do is get it where i want it then i'll tape down one side so i like that there so i'll take this backing piece of paper and peel up the transfer paper and i'll take the decal with it if you're smart you'll be prepared and have a pair of scissors and typically i'll just cut off a little bit like that and then i'll take some sort of uh, credit card or some sort of squeegee. This is an old gift card. And I'll apply this down, avoiding any air bubbles. So that is good. Now I'll remove this tape and peel this side back and continue applying the decal. And then once it's applied, just peel off the transfer paper and I'll leave the decal on the head. So there you go, that is how I cut out my bass drum decals and hopefully that cleared up some questions. If you made it this far in the video, be sure to leave a comment saying what you would put on the front of your bass drum head. And if I think it's a cool idea, I may just cut it out and send it your way. But that's all for this one. Thanks for watching.